All right, Shalom. First off, we've all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukhar Kedash, the bonus to the apostles and those of the GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and in sincerity and the women and children who follow. So, um, this lesson is really a follow up to the previous lesson I did. Um, you can check it out. It's, uh, it was pretty much named the same thing. You know, the Lord brought us into this. And, you know, he can take us out. But um, when I uploaded it, I kind of got something different from that phrase. Because if you um, watch the other video, it was basically um, the Lord, like, literally brought us in and he'd take us out. And that's what he said. You know, I can get the, well, I'm going to get the scripture anyways to the uh, part of this lesson. So I'll just read it. Um, so this is, uh, second, I just starting at chapter six, um, verse one, it says, and he said unto me in the beginning, when the earth was made before the borders of the world stood, wherever the winds blew before it thundered and lightning, or wherever the foundation of the paradise were laid before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were lifted up before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys of Zion were hot, and the ur of the present years were sought out, and the or suck it, and or ever the adventures of them that are that now sin were turned before they before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure, which I'll, I'll come back to that point. It says, uh. When when did I consider these things? And they all were made through me alone, and through none other, and by me also shall they be ended, and by no other. So that last statement right there is what I was going with. Uh, you know, I brought you in and I'll take you out. Like I said in the previous lesson, you know, uh, I know a lot of our parents said, you know, boy, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. That's literally what the Most High just said. Uh, then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, I brought you into this world, and through none other, and by me also they shall be ended, and by none other. But like I said, also, <clears throat> I kind of got something different from it, because the Lord also brought us in this truth, and this Lord could take us out, and the Lord could take us out. So we need to be um, appreciative, grateful, and do our job. Because nobody is exempt in this truth. We all have a job to do, and we all need to uh, be doing our job, basically. Okay, getting to it. So I'm going to visit back, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back up to uh, verse 5. It says, And over the present years were sought out, and, and or, it's like it, and or ever the inventions of them that now sinned were turned, uh, before they were sealed, that have gathered faith, for a treasure for a treasure and that's us the most high sealed them that gather faith for a treasure all right that's nothing to take light that's the lord bringing you in this thing being sealed and when you're sealed you have those responsibilities um as a man of the lord to look after things that you need to do okay as far as uh reading watching okay uh doing your lessons being a teacher being a good brother going on the highways. These are all things, characteristics of a man of the Lord. Um, so that's really the, the main point I wanted to get with that. I do have a few more precepts I want to get to as far as the Lord bringing us into this thing. Uh, this is uh, St. John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go uh, and bring forth fruit. Okay, that you should do this work. The Lord didn't, we, we didn't choose the Lord, you know. I don't know in, in our carnal minds, you know, or in our physical being, we went to, you know, we seen something or something um, came to our mind or one way or another, we all ended up in this truth. Okay, but it wasn't a coincidence. The Lord brought us here. Okay, we didn't choose the Lord. The Lord cho chose us. Um, let me see. 
It says, And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So that's that's the main thing, man, that we have to be appreciative because we're chosen. Now we don't know who the elect is, who the chosen is, but the elect gonna do elect things. The chosen gonna do chosen things. In which we're gonna get to all that, you know, we're gonna get to all of that because you know this is not like I said before, this is not a light thing. This is definitely something to take serious. Um, the, the truth is not a game. It's not a boys club. It's not a hangout. It's not a hood. It's not a uh, just anything, a clique. You know, this is the army of the Lord. This is a real ser a serious business here. Okay? Um, now, I mean, of course we have fun with it. You know, we joke around with the brothers, the Akium, you know. But when it's time to get down to business, you know, we get down to business. Um, chapter, this is like, this is Jeremiah chapter 1 uh, and verse 5. It says, starting at verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Okay, so the Lord knew what you were going to be before you were even, quote, born, you know. Because we've all been here before and we all come back in our lot. But the Most High knows your spirit. He's the one that made your spirit. He's the father of all spirits. Like he said back in uh, Second Ezra. You know, he made everything. Did he not know what he made you to be? He either made you to be elect or he made you to be two-thirds. There's no other way that you can go. So just know that whatever the Most High did, you know, he did... Um, with a reason. He made you who you are for a reason. He made Trump who he is for a reason. Okay, he made Yahweh Shai who Yahweh Shai was and still is for a reason. King David, Peter, you know, all the great men in the scriptures on down. Okay, from the highest to the lowest. Everybody's here for a reason. Everybody was put here for a purpose. Um, let me see. So... We're going to jump to, you know, how the, the Lord can take us out of this thing. Because that's that's a, a very important part. You know, we have to stay humble. We have to uh, do our, our thing or do our, our, our business in here. But we can't be high-minded and think that, you know, we're too good that we can't get taken out. Because there's been plenty of so-called great men or men that we all thought were great men. That have been taken out of this thing. You know, I don't have to go into the names. Y'all know the names. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You got to pick a side, man. You can't ride the middle. Uh, you either got to be hot for this thing on fire. Or cold, you know, not not even it at all. It would be better that to be on fire for this thing, or not to be cold at all. Because if you try to ride that middle fence, you might as well have been over here. You were wasting your time. Point blank, point blank. Period. You're wasting your time trying to be something like I'm righteous. I'm 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 kind of holy, you know. I fuck up. Every, everybody fuck up every now and then, you know. Every, nobody, um, what do they say, our righteousness is as filthy rags. But at the end of the day, the elect is going to get up and uh, do their business. They're going to get up and get back to work. Keep on pushing out more lessons. Being more brotherly. Doing the things they need to do. Sacrificing. You know, a nigga is just going to uh, get down and stay down. Or, or he's going to turn his back on the Lord and then try to come back. Like it says, uh, the scripture says, um, he that uh, remove his hand from the plow is not fit for my kingdom. You can't be in this work, in this, in this truth, leave and then come back and think that it's cool. That's lack of faith. And the most High is not dealing with that. You can't be lukewarm. You got to be on hot on fire for this thing. 
Okay, next scripture we got. Let me see. This is a uh, Second Peter's. Uh, chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do for if you do all these things, you shall never fall. Okay? Give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. Do your damnedest to not be damned. Okay? Do try your hardest. Do everything that you're supposed to do. Give diligence, okay? Constantly working, constantly building. Okay, in the spirit to make your calling and election sure. That's the only thing that you can. That's your only option in this truth. Is to work your hardest so that you'll be saved, so that you'll be sealed when uh, it's judgment time. When it's time for the chariots to come and the beam us out of this place and the, the missiles to, to judge America, that you're counted for righteous and that you're saved. See, so next scripture, this is uh First Corinthians chapter nine and um Yeah, yeah. Uh some meat on this, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to start up. Um Yeah, so this is nine, I'm starting at twenty-three. It says and this do I for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker of, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run the race run all, but one uh, receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. Okay, so it's comparing um, us in this truth to actually running the physical race, like the 100 meters. Let's lock you. You know, we're we're all running that race, but everybody's not gonna everybody's not gonna uh, finish, everybody's not gonna run. Okay, Every, so all all of us are gonna run, but everybody's not gonna be finished, everybody's not gonna be chosen at the end of the day. So we all have to run. It says, um, that we may obtain attain what? Obtain the salvation. Okay, you ain't got to be the fastest, but you have to be steady. You have to be consistent. Okay, we're not all going to cross that line at the same time, or you know, which is basically we don't all have the same gifts. Okay, everybody's not given that same amount of grace either. Okay, everybody can't be apostle to heart. Okay, but you can be the best you, you know, the best karatezi. You know, that that's me, you know, uh, that I can be in this truth, be the best version of me and, and inspire to be the best version of me and not just be that same old man, you know, and to to um, upgrade myself to evolve into something bigger and better. OK, because you can always be better. Just just uh, you can always do, go further. The scriptures say you can always do more. Uh, verse 25, it says, And every man that has strived for the mastery is uh, temperate in all things. So that's just what I said. Striving for the mastery, striving to be better every uh, every day, day in and day out, day in and day out, wanting to uh, become a better person, become a, a better man in his truth. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. So, like it's going back to the racers, you know, they're racing to, you know, to get a gold medal or to get a trophy or whatnot, which, what's, what's going to happen? When the missiles hit, that gold medal, that trophy, that uh, whatever it is they got for that prize, it's going to get burned. But us, we're pushing forward, okay, for an incorruptible crown. Which is why I said, you know, we don't all have to race at the, at the same pace. 
go at your pace. But make sure that your pace is consistent. Don't get left behind. Don't be slothful. Make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Make, uh, give all diligence to make your calling of election sure. It says, therefore, so run, uh, therefore, so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat us to air. Okay, so now it's comparing it to boxing. Okay, so um, make your hits count. Make do you and this truth. Make sure that it counts. Because if you just swing and beat in the air, how, how is that going to beat your opponent? That's not going to do nothing with your opponent. You're swinging at nothing. Now, if you swing and you connect, that did something. So make sure that these these um, punches connect. When you're doing your lessons, do them to your best ability. Make sure that they connect. Okay? When, when you're being a brother, when you giving alms, when you're doing all these things, keep this in mind and make sure that you're doing these things for the right reasons. Not for uh, a robot's sake or, or robotically or just because that's what you know is right or you think that's right or this is what I should do. Do it because that's what you sincerely have inside you. Okay? Uh, verse 27, it says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least, fuck it, least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. And that's a scary thing, that you out here with these garments on, and you telling other men and other uh, people, you know, how they need to come back to the Lord and how they need to do this, that, and the third. But when it's time for salvation, you get left behind. That's what, no man wants that. Who wants that? Like I said in the in the um in the in the earlier scripture, you might as well have just been over here. You might as well have just been cold, because you're lukewarm. The Most High is going to spit you out of His mouth, and that's the example of somebody who was lukewarm. Because you preach, you know, you say Lord, Lord, and He says I don't know you, and nobody wants to be in that situation. So we need to make sure. That we are doing the things that we're supposed to do, okay? Bidding um, the children to the, uh, the or the, the people to the marriage, you know, bringing them back into the fold. I uh, got a couple more scriptures, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Uh, let me see. This is a. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now that's talking about in the kingdom, okay? In the kingdom, you know, you're, it's only two ways to go. I've been uh, saying this. You're either going the right way or you're going the wrong way. You're either going to be uh, the elect or you're going to be a two-third. You're either going to wake to... Uh, what do you say? To everlasting life and some to shame and contempt. Okay, you're going to know in the kingdom that you um, scoffed the men of the Lord or that you rebutted the truth or whatever it is you did or that you was in the truth but you didn't make it. You're going to have that everlasting contempt like, man, I could have did better. I should have did better. But there's going to be nothing to do with that time. So that's why right now, why the getting is good, why the iron is still hot. we got to strike while the iron is hot. This is your opportunity now, okay, to put your best foot forward and to give it all you got. Go all out for the most high. Okay, so last scripture, and, uh, you know, we'll close it out after this. In that same vibration of, um, you know, this way or that way, we're going to get this uh, Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord, that two parts therein shall be cut off and die, and the third shall be left therein. Okay? So that's the separation. Let me read it again. And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Alright, so that's the two thirds being cut off, and the one third. Okay, getting salvation. 
Okay, he says, and I will bring a third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Okay, because it's not going to be an easy uh, deal getting out of here. Everybody's going to be tried. Everybody's going to have to go through something. All right, I might not go through the same thing you go through and you might not go through the same thing another brother go through. But we're all going to have a battle that we need to face. Okay, and the elect of one third is going to come through that uh, just as gold is refined. Okay, when uh, the process of gathering gold, they they'll dig for the gold and then they put it in the fire. And once they're in the fire, all the all the the bullshit basically is separated. All the bullshit is 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 flamed off and melts off, and all the good is is left within. So that's how we're gonna be when we're tried. Right now we're going through this trying. All the bullshit is being burned off of us, okay? And all the good is remaining. And that's how we are right now. It's lucky that should not have been that hard. <laughs> but um, it says, I will try them as gold is tried. And, I, and they shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my power. All right? So that's that's really what it is, man. We're going through our fiery trials right now, okay, and this is just the beginning because it's going to get a lot worse than what it is right now, but stay steadfast, stay diligent, and do what you got to do, read, watch, and pray, and with that being said, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Karkadash, the bonds to the apostles and the JMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and in sincerity and the women and children who follow. Shalom.